because there are a few folks who can't attend so we're going to record the meeting and i'm glad i remembered to click it because i often forget to do that which is not not great um okay so uh we're we're doing this show and sell is happening on august 7th it's going to be super hot is my guess but we're everyone's going to be inside um the, initially there were 30 makers that were accepted um in the, initially there were 30 makers who were accepted and we were thinking we could do some inside outside because of social distancing but with um just the way everything changed where there's only 20 people participating now so um we're going to be able to get everybody inside at construction junction and i'm going to open up some pictures of the show and sell event from 2019 so you can sort of get an idea of where everything will be set up so if you've been to construction junction in the past um <clears throat> when you walk in I'm trying to find my dropbox well, like it's always here Oh, there it is. Um, when you walk into Construction Junction, like to the to the left are the cash registers, and um, Missy, who is the general manager there, said that they were going to clear that whole area out. Um, when we've done this in the past, it's been during Earth Day weekend, so they they've had like plants and like gardening things there, so they weren't able to clean it out. So she said the last time I talked to her that they were going to still do that. I'm going to go in. Um, either later this week or early next week for like another walkthrough just to see what can be cleaned up and then when and then you like so you'll walk in so to the left will be cleaned off there'll be tables there to the right is like where they have a pop-up um, on, somebody needs to be let in from the waiting room um, some Lindsay I'm gonna make you a co-host um, and if you see anybody come in to the waiting room can you let them in for me Thank you. Um, so Lindsay is a volunteer and she is on the Handmade Arcade Board of Directors and she was accepted into the 2020 show and sell event before um, we asked her to join the board. So if I like, feel, if you feel like I'm overly familiar with her, that is why. Um, also, there are some other makers on here who I know really well who I might just randomly call out who I happen to know really well as, as well. So. Um, don't be freaked out by that. I'm, I'm overly, I'm an overly familiar human being. Um, so anyway, so when you walk in then to the right there, this like little pop-up shop, we're going to set up like a welcome table area in there. We're going to try to, you know, we have like a bunch of totes. We're going to try to sell and possibly ask people, um, you know, just try, we're trying to collect demographic data from our audience. So I think I'm going to try and do some like surveying of the people who attend the event and um we've got a bunch of volunteers signed up throughout the day so we've got that covered um and then when you you'll walk back to the um towards the back of the area of the um like the past where they have like the old appliances and then they're going to clean that area out and then behind that they've got these two classrooms that are really lovely and they're actually um, climate controlled so they are um they'll you know if you're if you get put back there you don't have to worry that um it's going to be super stuffy back there and um, i've been in construction junction um i feel like i'm there all the time i go there a lot i have a lot of meetings there i'm good i've become very good friends with the general manager we go out to lunch and just it's it's like a total pittsburgh thing where we um met and we went out to lunch once to talk about our like collaborating again and the more we talk the more we realize that one of my very best friends from high school is her cousin so like you know it's just the way the city is so um she and i've gotten really close over the years um so we'll have people in the two rooms so we're gonna have 20 makers spread out is like you know we're not we're gonna try to give everyone everyone's going to have don't need to bring a table everyone's going to have an eight foot an eight by two and a half foot table and at least one chair um, we there they may have enough um, construction junction has a bunch of chairs for their classroom um, for people to have more than one but if you're if you feel like you need more than one feel free to bring a folding chair or like a stadium chair or something um, that would be fine with us and um, so we'll have everyone set up there so I can't guarantee you're going to have like a perfect 
sort of like 10 by 10 space like you would at a regular craft fair. We're gonna like try and spread things out as much so everyone has as much space as possible, but we're going to um, have to just be flexible and we're going to have to, um, you know, like move things around. And when you arrive on Friday to like load in and set up, um, you can, uh, you know, you can like, we can tweak things and move things around, but we just have to like kind of be conscientious. So like when you bring your setup, if you're bringing a setup that you have like pre-made or you've like, I mean, since, you know, this event, you guys were accepted into this event, I'm a hopeful and I really hope everybody has been like doing stuff and have thinking about their setup and even done other shows, which is like what I hope, you know, has been happening. Um, so sort of that like requirement that you be like a super newbie, it doesn't, isn't like, doesn't count anymore because it's, this is like a year old. So, um, so, you know, just bring what you can and then just, we just, we're just asking folks to be flexible. Um, I'm going to share my screen and just show you some pictures of setups from the 2019 event, just so you can sort of see like what some makers did. And then I've got, um, like a little more, like a, a little more presentation, but I want to like give you a feel of the space. So click share screen. So th this is just like, I just have Photoshop open. And so some of these pictures are like kind of close up. Um, so this is a maker who did her first event in 2019. And then she went on to, um, she sells now, I believe at the Art Smith. She's done our, our larger, she's done our winter event. Um, I, I think she did our virtual event. I can't remember for sure. Um, so I'm just gonna close pictures that don't show you. These are just like close ups. Um, here. So this is like a setup of like, you can sort of see how close this maker is. There wasn't a, at the 2019 event, there was not a lot of space behind like the makers. So you sort of, so we're really trying to avoid that. Um, I don't know what the COVID uh, masking rules are going to be at um, Construction Junction on August 7th, because nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, and I will share these pictures with you so you don't have to take pictures pictures of your screen, which I totally saw you do, Beth. <laughs> Beth, not Beth Arnstein, Beth Vermillion. <laughs> there are also two Beths on this call who I know really well. <laughs> so it's a small city, guys. I'm gonna tell you, if you're gonna be in the craft world and you wanna like, you know, get involved in all of this stuff, the best advice I've ever been given by another crafter was work hard and play nice because the city is the size of a matchbook for real. Um, so anyway, the rules for the conventions, or I'm sorry, for the construction junction, we're just going to follow their rules, which right now are they're asking unvaccinated people to keep their masks on. So if you are vaccinated and you feel comfortable not being masked, all day long dealing with you know the public and everything, then you um, do not need to wear a mask. If you are unvaccinated, we're not gonna like ask anyone you know to prove anything. We just ask that you you know follow the construction junctions request to keep your mask on. And if you just simply want to keep your mask on because it's going to be you know an event and we don't know how many people are going to be there, you, that's great. I'll probably have mine on if it gets really crowded mostly because I'm not 100% ready to be in the world fully, you know, back at events. So, um, so here, am I still, yeah, I'm still sharing. I'm going to close that. These are just like close ups. So this is like the back corner. There will be somebody here. You'll see, you see that they're like the old timey uh, stoves and dryers behind them. So there will definitely be two makers in this, like in this back corner area. Um, if you want to bring a smaller table, um you can so like you know we're going to provide you with an eight foot by two and a half foot table but if you want to bring like a, a smaller pop-up table or a car table or a, there um there's this the six foot pop-up tables and then there are these ones that i think are great they're three foot by two two and a half feet but they like come up to different levels and they you can put them up almost like to cocktail table level which i i out when i bend which I promised my family in 2019 I would never do again because um, it's just too much. But I I always would bring one of those tables that comes up higher and use it either for display to like kind of push things out or I'd put it behind my table and have it as like a standing table for me to like just have my notes on, have my change box on, have like things that I needed for myself on. So like you want to remember that you still need to be able to like have a space for yourself to like make change and do different things. Um, this is like the, so this, this area back here, this like wooden 
sort of cool looking um, like you know design area that there's a hallway that goes back there and there are the two classrooms that are back there and we're going to definitely have like a volunteer um, kind of stationed there and we'll have a table stationed there like in the hallway so that people will know to go back there we I was really concerned about people not realizing that there were rooms back there, but it was not a problem in 2019. We were able to flow the traffic back there. We hung up some signs like don't miss the, this area. So if you're back there, don't worry. It, they got a lot of foot traffic. Um, one of the things that is really important. Um, so here's another maker who was like set up right outside that room. So she didn't use her table at all. She just sort of brought some things to hang on. Um, and she actually does this macrame. She's, she's done handmade arcade since. And um, I think she also sells at the Art Smiths. She makes some really cool, like some really cool stuff. Um, there's a close up of that. Um, I have like an actual presentation about uh, setups. I just want to show you the space. And I just opened everything at once. So I'm just trying to find, I think I opened doubled pictures. So here's like another maker. You can sort of see like, you can see Construction Junction behind her. Um, um, so yeah, you can see like there was like a little hallway, like a little, you know, space to walk. Um, like again, that's just, and you can see, you know, the warehouse area. Um, in terms of what's available for you at Construction Junction the day of the event, um, we have, so the water at Construction Junction, you can't drink it. So we're going to have coolers of waters at um, the front, like in the handmade arcade, like welcome area, which we'll have, you know, for you guys, we'll have what we'll have vendors walking around to make sure you like, especially since it's going to be August and we don't know what the heat situation is going to be like. I thought I had more pictures of the actual, yeah, on my computer, not in my Dropbox. Um, so you're going to want to do a couple of things. You're going to want to make sure you have like, you know, water and we'll, we will have water and um, you're going to want to like bring food because we, we will have, there's going to be a food vendor there. Um, it, in 2019, we had a coffee vendor there, but we we didn't arrange for that this time because we just weren't sure with space wise, like how, you know, like safe that would be. And we, we when we like it's like we went we were trying to do food trucks and then um it was like food trucks were i don't know like we kind of like there's like a window for food trucks we can get them to come and then they fill up really quickly so we sort of missed the window so there will be a, a vendor um that's jen saffron i don't know if anyone knows her she used to work for g pack and she's like a really great caterer um so she's actually got a new food venture that she's doing um and, I'm, and I misspell it all the time, or I, I don't say it correctly, so I'm not even gonna try to say it, but the link to it's on the website. Um, where are all of these pictures I took? Oh, here we go. All right, I found it. We can all relax now. So <laughs> when you walk in, you'll see like, you'll, the, you'll be, there'll be makers to the left, and then Handmade Arcade will be set up right here. You can see the top of my head right there. We'll have like a little table here. And then we'll, I'll probably get chalk again. And chalk, we had like chalk arrows and we had information. And then makers were sent up, set up back here. And then they were set up in those back rooms. Let me see if I can find a picture of makers in the back room. So you just sort of get an idea of what that, oh, here's another picture. So this is like, as you go towards the back, this is what, the space looks looked like we got a picture. So we got a picture from above, and um, okay, here are some of the back room pictures. So these back rooms were were pretty crowded. You can see people were really like pushed tucked in there, but um, there you're not going to be. It's not going to be as crowded. We're trying to be really conscientious of space um, this time, so. See if I can find another one. Let's move room picture. Okay. Oh, and so, and we're also not going to be having any like hands-on activities in those back rooms like we did the last time. But what we are going to have, which I'm really excited about, is um, the I'm I'm finalizing the details with um, Pittsburgh Glass Centers is has asked permission to bring 
their um, mobile glass blowing um, truck. So the Hot Wheels will be there and that will be outside. And so there'll be the food from the food vendor, which is like Spreads, I'm gonna say it wrong, Spreads Tuzia. I mean, I'm even Italian and I'm gonna say it wrong. Let me pull it up. And um, Mil-tatora. Say it again. Sprezzatura. All right, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna have Millie's ice cream truck is going to be there from 11 to one. So if you are encouraging any family members with kids to come, you should have them come between then. Um, randomly again, the, how Pittsburgh is the smallest city in the world. My um, Girl Scout co-leader and good, very good friend here in Brentwood, um, her sister, is the franchise owner of the Miller's ice cream truck. So like, like small, like I can't stress enough how just, it's just the smallest, it's the greatest city in the world. Everyone is just there. So um, I was gonna pull up the, yeah. So, and you can see what kind of food they have, but I would recommend bringing food, especially cause you're gonna be there from 8.30 to at least 4.30 or five. And you may not be able to get away from your table if you don't have anyone coming to help you. Um, so you can definitely have somebody with you. Like you, there's no rules about like, you know, you having help or whatever. In fact, I highly, highly encourage, um, people to bring, uh, family and friends to help them. Um, okay. I'm going to go through sort of my little PDF presentation that I put together for this. And if I'm talking too fast, just, you know. I'm going to slow down. So I'm going to share this uh, with you all tomorrow or later tonight. Um, and I'm also going to share with you, I put together um, just like some pictures today for another maker who I have been working with um, of screenshots. She's a part specifically, she's a bag maker. She and I had a meeting yesterday um, about helping her set up her space. So I put together like a display item um, sheet and I get in some more information that I thought would, I, would be helpful for everyone here too. Um, so um, I'm not really gonna go through, like I, I'm gonna share this, but like, I, this is, like this is a presentation that I give if you're like wanting to learn more about like how to apply to craft fairs and what to do. Um, I feel like uh, you guys um, probably have been doing, you've done this, you applied to ours. I don't wanna like repeat information, um, so. And some of this has more to do with um, like bigger events that you've applied to that aren't like a reset from you know a pandemic year. <laughs> so um, I do think that like some of the things that are important to uh, getting ready for events is to set like realistic goals for your inventory, and I think that. Um, if you have if you have anything like any help need any help like when you're setting up for the event or the day of the event just ask us we i have like bins of like zip ties stick like pins like any kind of like you know duct tape all that stuff like any kind of supplies you could possibly need if something goes wrong or you know whatever we're here to help so just come up to grab one of the volunteers let them know what you need come up to the front um ask us what how you know what we can do um so, you know, when you come to the show and sell, again, I said, as I mentioned earlier, we're asking everyone to be flexible with your space. It's not like the convention center where I can like chalk out 10 by 10 spaces for everybody. Um, I'm gonna try to give everybody as much space as possible. I will be there on Friday um, at noon and the tables are being delivered sometime before noon. So when I get there, um, I'll start to like put the tables out and figure out where it, everyone will is going to fit um you're going to have an eight foot by two and a half foot table you'll have at least one chair and if you don't want to use our table at all and you want to bring totally just break it down you don't have to use it um, but the most important thing for show and sell is to remember that um you don't have a lot of time for setup for this one it's um you're gonna have between four and about six thirty to set up so if you can't get to construction junction with your stuff until like after work, like you're going to, you're going to have to just unload it and then come the next morning. Um, I'm going to try to get a permission to get back into construction junction at 8am, 
but we might not be able to get back in until 8.30. So if you've got to take an hour or two off of work that Friday, you, you might have to do that. Um, it's just because we're kind of at their mercy. They're not charging us to use their space. They're like being really kind about a lot of things. And um, I just kind of have to go with what they're doing and that's like what their schedule is. Um, Missy might be willing to stay until seven. She's really great, um, but it's sort of, just, uh, I, I told her we're gonna try to get out of there by 6.30. So, um, and also like what's really, really important when, you, when you're when um, you doing this, make sure everything fits in your car before you, um, like if you're coming like to unload by yourself, if you like go to pack it up the night before, or like if you find that you're packing your car up like at three o'clock on Friday and you all of a sudden you realize it doesn't all fit in your car, you're gonna be late. So like I would definitely do like a, test run or figure out if it's going to fit in your car. Um, this is just a little thing I always talk about. So this is my sad little table here at Handmade Arcade from two years ago. This is my friend Sarah, whose sister owns the Millie's ice cream truck. She always sells at my table when I sell. And like, it's just sad. There's nothing behind me. It's just like this, it's like the saddest display of all. And so like, you, I always put it next to this display because I always think that the, they do that. They make this couple this is Debbie, she's a founder of Handmade Arcade. She uh, no longer volunteers, but she's just recently stepped off the board. Um, they make, she and her husband make um, coasters out of record albums. So they made this backdrop of all these record albums. And I think that their backdrop is amazing. And I think it's really, really cool. But what I, and I, but what I, where I think that their display is like kind of a lost opportunity is that they use this, it's, it's a really fun and a really cool tablecloth, but like you can't see their items on it. So like, I feel like they would sell a lot more if they just had a plain white tablecloth that you could really see that, oh, those are record albums on it. Um, so, you know, I just, so I really like have gone at this point pretty much through like everything for the specific event. So this presentation is basically like just sort of, um, just like setup ideas, which I, I can go through. And then at the end, it has like a crafty chest, a checklist of things to bring. So I'm just gonna go through it. And if you have any questions, um, just, you know, yell them out or whatever. And then when we get to the end, we'll go through like the checklist of what like I think is important for everyone to bring. And again, I'm gonna share this. So you don't have to like take notes. And also this is being recorded. So you can watch it again. Um, these are a couple makers that I, th that these are just like some things that I think are like a good idea. So like when you're at a craft event, you like it's a good idea to have a sign that's high above your head because like here, so this is the GPAC Framers Market and um, they, they are, they, they've been doing this a couple of years at Handmade Arcade and you, and they never, like people are always like, oh, where is that? I can't find it. I can't find it. And it's on the map. It's in the back. They always have a big space, but they always put their sign on the ground. They don't put it up high. These people can't find them because it's like just flat. So it's a really good idea to somehow like put the name of your business up. Like if you get, um, there are, backdrops like this backdrop that Debbie and her husband use this is like a $35 photography frame backdrop that you can buy um, from Amazon and even if you like hung that with just a white sheet or like a, get like the white photography like backdrop that comes I don't I think it might come with it you could even just hang that and then make um, you know like cut out she, she just cut out you know made uh, but like um, the sign by cutting out fabric and cutting up, cutting out her, um, her uh, company name in this fun font and, you know, probably just either ironed it all together or glued it. Um, so there's that. And then she, this maker has just, she just has like a white sheet, but she has, um, just a large circular, uh, it's like, it was, um, it's like a embroidery loom, like a really big one. And that she had just like stretched, she had her logo printed on fabric and she just stretched it on there. And I thought that was probably a good way to do things. Um, these are just some other, like, I think that sometimes like, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of, if you've got a lot of fun little colorful things like to use plain, plain tablecloths, I think they work better. I think your products get seen better um, than using like a really colorful tablecloth, unless like, unless you're like really utilizing like your vertical space, which we'll talk about in a smart way. Um, so this maker, I think she does a great job of, she like built in a little store, 
But what I think this maker does that is not like, I think she puts too much out. And that's one of the things we always talk about. Like less is more. You don't have to put all your stuff out at once. Like you can put out like, um, you know, like one, like she's got a bunch of things that are the same. So you can put out like one or two and then as they sell sort of replenish, especially at the at construction junction because it's small. Um, you want to be really, really careful with your stuff. Um, if you drop, and I know this from experience because I, the very first handmade arcade I did at Construction Junction, this happened. Um, if you drop, like if you make something with fabric and you drop it on the ground and then like you're super clumsy like I am and as you go to pick it up, you step on it, um, it will get so dirty because the floor at Construction Junction is filthy. So your shoes are going to be dirty and you're, it's covered. It'll get covered in dirt and you may not be able to sell it. Um, it's just like that has more to do with the fact that like I'm super like uncoordinated and that and I probably also even tripped when that happened and fell forward a little bit. Um, but you want to be careful like these floors look nice and clean because these are the convention center but the construction junction is dirty. So remember that when you're setting up. Also when you set up on Friday night, I meant I should have mentioned this earlier. Um, when you set up on Friday night, you everyone should buy go out and get and I'll try to pick up a bunch of extras, but like go to the dollar store. I know it's not super, it's not great to do this, but like get the, the dollar plastic table covers if you can, or bring a sheet or bring something because once your table is set up, you're going to want to cover it um, just very gently with a sheet or some kind of like plastic covering because it, we're in this warehouse and overnight d the black dust from the ceiling will settle. And I again learned that the hard way. My very first construction junction event was a two night, a two day event. And the second day I didn't know that. And there was like, a f I saw the makers like covering their things up at the end. And I was like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, you have to cover your stuff up because tomorrow morning it'll be dirty. So luckily I like was able to figure out what to do um but you also want to make sure that if you don't you don't want to put everything out because if it's like messy and hard to find and people like will knock stuff on the ground then that can like be problematic because of the warehouse aspect of it so um, another reason why you want to have a tablecloth that reaches that's like bigger that reaches all the way to the ground a lot of times these tablecloths like you you may not notice it from the front but some of them they are set up or they're pinned up so that the back is open because makers have their extra products in bins underneath to slide, to you know, like slide in and out to, re to replenish their um, inventory as they go. Um, this is just another example of a maker using their vertical space like smartly to just show one of each t-shirt. So what this maker does, he sort of sets up all of his the t-shirts that he has and then you go there like and it's like in a click if when you're like go to a concert and they're hanging and you're like i want that t-shirt but in like an extra small or a large or whatever so he has it set up so that you can just see the one t-shirt and then ask for the size and then they give that then you know it gives it you to see um these are just some other examples of like some setups that i think are kind of fun and quirky and use like different layer styles um one of the fun things about using these like sort of wooden boxes is they can double up in as um store as like design elements to your page to not to your page to your uh, to your table and to your space but also like you can pack all your stuff in them so like when you think about how you're going to bring your things to handmade arcade and you're like oh i'm going to use these cool vintage looking boxes to showcase things but when i bring my stuff i'm going to pack all my stuff inside those boxes and then you you know it saves you space um and it makes for an easier setup and um pack like packing up um and she like this maker also like she was making gifts and she had prepackaged gifts which i always think is a good idea and you can see she used her vertical space because she's standing next to it so there's another one now uh, this is the one of the makers who was at show and the very first show and sell and this is her setup at um at the 2019 handmade arcade and she puts a lot of stuff out but like it works for her because it's still like approachable and she makes so much stuff that this probably isn't even all of this is probably like a, a small amount of her inventory but she makes hats and with these puff balls and they sell super well um and she set up her table so that she's got all of her vertical space happening but she's still so you can like she's got a little space for her to stand and talk to makers uh, or to, I'm sorry, shoppers. Yeah, I don't think we have any t-shirt makers at this event, so I'm just gonna jump past 
Um, so, and this is another maker, a bag maker. Th these grid walls are great. They're relatively inexpensive and you can get freestanding ones. Um, and that'll be in the email I'm gonna send you. You can get them at a bunch of different places, but you can get them at Home Depot. Um, and they come with hooks and they come with, not come with hooks, you can buy the hooks, you can buy um, baskets, you can buy, um, you can buy this little shelf for it. And they're, rel they're, they're not a huge investment and they're lightweight and they're easy for, for, and they're like versatile. So you can use them in a bunch of different ways. Um, and then I know that these, like, one of the things that's like super important for this event, for any event, is pricing your items. So like if you're making bags, for example, and you've got a bunch of mags that are like sort of similar, like, sh like you can see here, she's got a bunch of little change purses and she's got these little, um, like make it kind of case bags here. So they're all very similar in size. Although they're, pro they're probably, I mean, I'm sure they're all, I know they're all the same price. So she's got the names of the products here and their prices. And so that way, like if somebody's walking it up to her table, they can quickly see what it costs. And she also has a tag on all of her bags. So I think it's smart to do both because if, if, if somebody, like some people don't, you know, people are, Sometimes people walk up and want to like just like you know quickly see what it costs before they, they, they or you might be talking to somebody else and they don't want to interrupt you. So it's always really important to make sure your pricing is like available in a couple of different places, um, and that's one way to do it. These are little um, frames from IKEA. I don't know if they still have them. I bought. I actually used used to use the same ones, um, and they were really inexpensive. And what's great about them is you just unscrew the bottom. And you can slide in like paper so you can like if you change a product change your prices you know like you it's really like versatile for like from show to show um and then another thing this is like more for like if you're at the convention center but it, like i always say think of your space as like a tiny store and these are two makers who i feel like i've done that well so i i want i like to show this everyday balloons um space because these are makers who started at handmade arcade like with a with a wrinkled tablecloth with a couple of t-shirts on a table like totally like screen printed like they've always drawn these little characters but like they just um have just grown and grown and grown and now they they um they used to live here in pittsburgh and they moved um, more towards like back closer to where their um becky and chris are their, are their names and I'm not sure if Chris is from where they live now, but I know Becky's family is. And it's like kind of like, it's like a, it's an hour or two away, like in the middle of the state. They have their own store. They are, you know, they just are really like making a life out of um, their maker businesses. And I know before the pandemics hit, they were starting, they were starting to think about, they had bought a pe big piece of land and they were starting to think about building and hosting classes and things like that. Um, with their store. So I'm not sure where they are with that. I'm hoping to just be able to see them in December and find out um, what's going on with them. And then this is just another like way if these folks brought, like they bring these shelves, they, they probably had like a, sometimes people for handmade arcade rent U-Hauls and show up, it's crazy. And then they like quickly set these little stores up. But um, I like to, so I wanted to show this one because this is, so this is like a little A-frame, almost like a little ladder sort of display item. I don't know if I can zoom in. Yeah, I can. Um, if you wanted to make something like this, it's super easy and it's collapsible. And if you go to Etsy and you search like craft show display items or craft show display plans, you can buy, It's you can, I mean, I'm not like super spatially, um, I guess I'm spatially challenged is the word I'm gonna use. Um, so like if I were like, Oh, I could make that. I like wouldn't be able to make that. Like I would mess it up. I would cut myself. I would like I, the, the these would be like different sizes. It would be a, it would be a disaster. But like you can go on to um on to like on to different websites and find like you know like plans like for a couple of dollars to like make some things like this. I've seen things for like cupcake holders that are wooden that are good like good ideas and different like shelving units. So like, and it basically breaks it down for you. Like buy this, cut it this length, get hinges. Like, I mean, obviously you don't, you know, not everyone has to do that, but I'm like 100%. Um, like I'm not even allowed to use power tools. Like my brother was over here yesterday. I can, um, 
like we, this is like such a random story. I'm going to tell you it anyway. My brother has an annual bocce party and he wanted to make like this ridiculous trophy out of an old, out of an old spaghetti strainer that my grandmother used to have that we still have, he still has. And so I like came up with the plan for it, but then my husband like drew it out and he's going to build it because, um, it, and my brother can't come up with any plans whatsoever. So it was like three people of like different phases of creativity and ability, like at the table. But you know, like so, you know, if you can build stuff like that, that's awesome. Um, this maker is like clothing. You know, she's got. She uses this is kind of fun. Like you can get these at Construction Junction. She created a little like uh, screen out of. Um, I think that I don't necessarily think I don't know if these are shutters, but you can like I've seen people do that with shutters and they put hinges on them. And it always like looks really good, especially for jewelry. Um, and then this maker, it has really evolved in her. This is um, Kayla Rebel. She's really evolved in her setup over the years. And this is one of my favorite iterations of her booth with these wooden um, ladders that she just put boards in. And I know when she comes, like she uses all of these crates to show her things. And I know she packs her tea towels and bags in her in those crates. Um, so I don't know if I talked about this earlier, but when we, when we, at Handmade Arcade, one of like our biggest rules is to like be really like kind, be a good crafty neighbor, like don't encroach on your crafty neighbor space. And um, so this is Matt. He is uh, from Alternate Histories. He's one, he's a great guy. He's been a part of our maker community forever. He always volunteers when we have other events. He'll actually be volunteering the weekend of this um, event. And I noticed this when I was setting up, when I was putting this presentation together, I, I, I was like, oh, where's that good picture I have of Matt's? Um, because he's a, he's a, he makes posters and he's got some good display items um, that I knew that, and I knew I had this. And then as I was looking at, at it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is really not cool. The maker next to him set up this grid wall and hung things on the back of it. So it's like in totally encroaching on his like, crafty space like that looks like it's part of his display and I kind of remember I have I so many things happened throughout the course of the day but like I feel like I had to go to that maker and ask her to take those down because that was like just not okay like it's just like not okay to set your stuff up in a way that's confusing with your neighbors so um that's just like my little soapbox moment here for our event and then this is Kim from Worker Bird. This is always like a fun thing to show. This was her first handmade arcade in 2012. I don't have a picture of Everyday Balloons from the first year I know that they were there, or else I'd show you that as well. But her first year, she was doing block prints. Um, she was, you know, just very new in her maker business. She had been a designer for many years living in Florida, and she and her husband had just moved back to Pittsburgh to be closer to her mom. And see, this is what happens. You start to do the handmade arcade and I start to get to know you. And then I know, then, then before you know it, I know everything about you um, because I have like the strangest memory for things. Um, so this was her first event. And then this was, um, this is like her now, like she does tin work. She's gone to this patchwork quilt stuff. She's just evolved her business in such a way that she is like, it, when she was in 2012, she was still working um, for a design company. And I, I'm not sure what her husband Steve was doing, but now they're like both total 100% entrepreneurs. Like Kim works full time as an artist and Steve works full time as a recording engineer. They have a studio in their house. And so they've sort of taken this like entrepreneur maker, you know, lifestyle like and run with it. And they're both just doing, they're doing really great. So like, these are like my stories of like everyone, you can do this. You can, if your goal is to like, someday leave your job or if you're like you know like thinking about i want to pursue this full time it can it there's so many stories of uh people who have done it um these are just some more ex examples of things to show like ways to show items um this maker was at him was at show and sell and she basically bought pegboard from construction junction i believe painted it and then just hinged it together and then hung her embroidery on it um, this maker makes hilarious cat underpants. So, uh, and then she shows them in these colorful boxes, like suitcases, and she hangs up a clothing line. Um, so like, you know, just fun, crazy ways to show your stuff like that fits with your brand is always good. Um, so this is like, so just a list of like ways to think about it. 
places you can go. Um, I'm going to send you links to other places that I that didn't get put on here. Um, there are like, like, I know, I think, I think it, I don't know if it was you, Lindsay, but somebody went to the Goodwill outlet to buy baskets for our raffle a couple of years ago, two, on 2019. And like, so like that, those things like that, like you can go and get places there. I personally can't go to like thrift stores like that because I just, I have such a bad dust allergy that it just is like, I, I like walk in and I walk out and it's also like, I just can't do it. But like, if you can do it and you can, and you're a good shopper, I'm a terrible shopper. Like I say, hit those places up because you can get great display items. If you go to construction junction often enough, um, and I regret, I like will probably go for, I'll probably bring up my regret of this moment until I find it, it myself in the situation where I can purchase mannequins again. But I was at Construction Junction once for something. And they had a bunch of mannequins from a store that they had gotten. And I thought to myself, oh God, I should buy a couple of those for just because of like, I should just, it's like, who doesn't just need mannequins? And, and I didn't, and I can't tell you how many times I think to myself, God, wouldn't it be great to have a mannequin for that? <laughs> so like, if you go to Construction Junction often enough, um, <laughs> you can find like things that you might need because like mannequins and dress forms and things like that can get pretty costly. Um, so if you're like doing something that like, you know, like clothing wise, um, you definitely want to invest in one of them. But if you want, I would definitely look for them like reused or from like, like if a stores are closing or something like that. Um, so uh, this is like, you know, like just, these are little clay, clay, uh, like mugs that they just like are using this like old vintage like shelving unit. Um, I think so, I think it's a good idea to um, like you know like match up your um, you know like what you're selling with maybe with your display items like you know like if you're um, doing something like you know like metal robots maybe think of doing black and silver not necessarily floral plant patterns because that might that might not work. Um, you could always like bring things from home. Like if you have, if you're making like knitted pot holders and you've got like some kind of vintage kitchen items that you want to like put them in, like old pirates bowls or something that you're not, if you don't worry, but you wouldn't, you know, be, be broken. Um, another a good thing to do, it's always nice, uh, you know, always have something like, like not always, but you should always, um, you should have some, you should have like business cards at your table because people, sometimes they decide they don't want to, necessarily buy but they'll come back to your website or if you don't have an e-commerce site which is not in any way shape or form required um they could still get in touch with you and say hey i was at show and sell and you were selling these really cool t-shirts can is there any way i can get one um and you can maybe like do a drop off or something like that um you should 100 percent have the ability to take a credit card if you haven't signed up for that do it right away um we I can't tell you how many times we've had makers who didn't have a credit card tell me, oh, I, it was, I had the worst day because the people just don't carry cash like they used to and they expect to be able to use their debit card or their credit card. So make sure you have a square reader. Um, you won't be able to get onto Construction Junction's Wi-Fi, but the, to use your data for a credit card reader, is just, it's such a small amount of data. Like it really won't affect your plan. It really shouldn't affect your plan at all. Um, I've had makers tell me that it doesn't, I wouldn't know because I've got two teenagers and we have unlimited data. Otherwise I would be spending thousands of dollars a month on data overages. Um, and as much as I try to get them off of, I don't, whatever they're on TikTok or Snapchat or my brother is not on social media at all. And he calls it space kittens. So like whatever they're on, they spend a lot of time on it. Um, so that would be fine like just definitely have a credit card reader. Um, again, I, I would recommend doing a test at home, take pictures of it. So you remember what it looks like. Cause it's, that's the one thing, like the one maker that I was meeting with yesterday who I've been helping, she did a Mount Lebanon, um, event that her sister helped her set up. She has a heart. She's like, I, she's so much talented. She makes these leather bags and she's so talented with what she does. And she's like, you can tell she's like total perfectionist based on like her pictures and everything about her website. But for whatever reason, she just cannot set up a booth. She just does, she's like, I just, it just doesn't click for me. She wants to put everything out. She has a really hard time with like pulling back. So she had her sister set up her booth at the Mount, at a Mount Lebanon fair recently. Um, 
and then she didn't take pictures of it, but she said she sold more of that event than she's ever done because her setup was like uh, kind of optimized. So I, I was just telling her, I was like, have your sister come over to your house and reset up in your dining room. Like, even if the table's not the right size, like just to get that idea. So, um, I would recommend doing a test setup, even if you've done stuff recently, like I always, I always do a test setup before Handmade Arcade, but that's just because I only ever sell, I don't do any other markets. So if you're doing a lot of markets, you don't have to do that. Um, and also um, when you're at show and sell, I would take a picture of your setup and if you can uh, with a flash, like using your light, because a lot of, may, a lot of um, you know, a lot of markets are asked for booth setups and hit like for the handmade arcade winter application which is now open if you'd like to if any if you guys are interested in participating uh, that would be awesome feel free go for it apply um that we are requiring or requesting a booth photo this year and if you don't have one if you're a new maker it's okay we have that in the instructions but the reason and it doesn't impact your um a small setup it's not gonna it's, it has nothing to do with whether you'll get in or not the sole reason why we're asking for it this year is because one of my goals for the event is to make sure that we have like a more equitable setup this year so that a maker with like a huge display who's like a professional and travels around isn't going to be put next to someone who's brand new with a really small setup and that's brand new person's going to get completely like just overshadowed so um, I don't know why other people, I mean, I'm assuming people like want to, that's, there's all sorts of reasons why you'd ask for a booth display, but for our purposes this year, if you just decide to apply and you're like, I don't have that, don't like panic. The purpose of it is so that I can make sure that I lay the table space out equitably. Um, another thing that is important, like for newer makers, um, so, you know, you want to be approachable. So makers who are standing and like, like if maker, makers like you you can't stand the whole time obviously you're gonna have to sit down at some point eat your lunch whatever but um i it's always you know i always find that makers who are standing and smiling and and you know like sort of like feeling like making eye contact people will approach them and if you can engage somebody in a conversation you 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 can you know you can you know really do your best to convert them into into a sale or upsell them into adding something like if they're if they're like oh i really like these earrings you could be like well look i have a necklace that like matches it and you can you know try and sell a set to someone um i always say to engage people in conversation um i'm super obnoxious and so like when i'm at handmade arcade and i'm selling at my table um and it's like kind of like no one's there but people people will walk past and like look i'll sort of yell out and be like be like, hey, hey, do you, do you, I like, I make, ap I used to make aprons for kids and for adults. And I'd be like, do you need somebody, do you have a cook in your life? Do you have a gardener in your life? You know, whatever. And just sort of like, but not everyone is able to do that. Um, I think sometimes if you come up with like a sort of a sales pitch ahead of time that you can sort of describe your product and why somebody might want to buy it from you, um, that's always a good idea. If you're not like a really talkative person, um, a maker who I recently have gotten to know pretty well told me that she went, she has a master's degree in, um, in ceramics. And she was told me that during one of her marketing classes, they would have them record themselves doing their sort of sales pitch so that they would like watch it back and see or, or record yourself or, ha or ask one of your friends, like ask me what it is about my products that makes them special. And like, think about how you describe it to like your family and friends, like why you're doing this and that like sort of emotion and passion comes out and sort of like, you know, if you wanna that, it helps to like sort of think about that ahead of time. And then also if you plan out what you're going to say, you'll find yourself repeating it and you know, it, getting better at like saying something quickly to people as they come to your booth. But if you have someone with you, like if you have your, your, your partner with you or a friend or somebody who is helping you that day, they'll start to hear what you're saying and then they'll start to repeat it and they'll start to get good at selling your stuff too. So like you're, you know, like that, um, a little like something that I always tell the little story I always tell don't, I always recommend if you've got somebody who's willing to come and stay with you all day long and help you, that's great. Bring them. If they're not good at selling, give them the job of like wrapping things up, ringing up job, ringing up, um, the, finalizing the sale. If they're not good at talking, I for years had my mother who was a high school teacher who you would think would be really good at talking and, um, 
like selling things, but she's never worked a day of retail in her life. So she had absolutely no idea what to do. So I would like be running around like a lunatic uh, like, for a couple years in a row at Handmade Arcade. And, I, and it would be like noon and I'd go check on my table and I hadn't sold anything. And so then finally things would come down and I'd go back to my table. And then like, I would almost always sell out from like, you know, one to the end of the day. And I realized it was because my mom was a terrible salesperson. She was really bad. So I fired her. So I was like, you're, you're done. You can put your coat behind the, the, my table and all of that, but you're not allowed to sell anymore. And that's when I got my friend Sarah to start selling because she's really, you know, like, like more like me and, you know, was able to like get people talking and selling. Um, so some final tips, like, you know, make sure you have your pricing. People can be weird and don't always ask. Um, if you can, if you have like a, an item that's kind of unclear what it is, like maybe make a small sign describe a, like with the description. Um, so the prices of your items should be consistent with the prices you have on your website or other markets. So like if you've got, if you if you're selling it like us like like the Art Smiths, which is a consignment store, you want to make sure that your prices are the same um, here at this event because you can you're going to want to tell people like oh well if, thanks for stopping by my table. Um, if you ever want to like, you know, you, you can let them know that where else you sell, if you sell like it, um, wild card, or if you're selling or, or you can also let them know, like if they like seem interested, but they don't want to finalize the purchase and you know, you're doing like an, I made it market in a couple of weeks. If it's something you can always say, Hey, I'll be here, you know, in a few weeks, maybe you can come to that as well, but you want to make sure your prices are consistent. Um, because it, it doesn't do you any favors for someone to see that your prices are like really cheap one place, but different, like, you know, higher in another place. Um, if you want to have like a sale or something, like if you want to be like, Oh, these are like special sale items for the event that that totally makes sense. Like just make it make sense. If you're selling something for less than what you normally would sell it at a store or on your website. Um, like you could have like, like a second sale or something like that. Um, so, okay. So here's sort of what we, you know, to, to bring. So we always say bring lots of your products, but so that's for, you know, for the event at the convention center where we consistently have had over 10,000 people come every day. We've only done the show once. We had 1800 people attend it the first time, which is a pretty good number. Um, from our perspective, the normal number foot traffic on a regular day of at construction junction is usually around 500 people. So we were able to triple that. Um, I have absolutely no idea how many people are going to attend this event. Um, there's no way to know. Like I, I have no idea how many people are going to attend the event in the winter this year because like everything is so different. So bring what you make. I mean, bring as much as you have. Don't, I don't feel like anyone needs to like go crazy, lose sleep. Like I think that, you know, if you have a table full of items, that's going to be great. If we have a huge crowd because people are like, you know, hankering to get out and you sell out of your stuff, that's fine. Like normally we're like, you know, bring enough so you don't sell out, but like, because it's so, there's so much, so many unknowns right now that if, if we have like a lot of people come and you sell out and it's like two 30 and you're like, Trisha, I don't know what to do like, it's fine. You can just pack up and go home. Like normally I'd be like, sorry, stand at your table. You, we can't have an empty space at the convention center, but this is like a totally different ball game. So it's fine. Just come and find me. Um, make sure you have change. Um, you, you can never have too many small bills. We don't normally have enough money to make change and we don't really sell anything. We, we're like really bad at making our own handmade arcade merchandise. So we will have some change, but not a lot. So make sure you have enough change. Uh, make sure you have a fully charged cell phone because if you're taking credit cards, it can eat at your battery. Um, and I would also consider getting a portable charger. There are places to charge your phone at the con at construction junction, but it might not be near your table. So you, you know, you might have to go and plug it in someplace else. So I would definitely consider getting a portable charger or having like a backup, like, you know, if you have somebody with you, um, have the, your, your um, point of sale system on their phone as well. So you can like go back and forth. Um, definitely get a credit card reader, definitely get promotional contact materials, like business cards or little, um, you know, you, it doesn't even have to be, I mean, you can get 500 business cards pretty inexpensively at Vistaprint. Um, and you can get them pretty quickly. They come pretty fast. You could do a little postcard if you wanted to. Um, and if force comes to worse and you just like completely like forget to do it, you can always just like print, like just print out things and cut them while you're even standing there. 
Um, definitely make sure you have something to cover your table with because these tables are old and these are you know rented tables. We will have some extra um, tablecloths if you forget, but it's not going to like you know make sure you plan that out as part of your display. Um, so if you need help while we're at at Construction Junction, we will have volunteers. They cannot make sales for you. They're not allowed to handle your money. Um, they cannot um, take money from you and go buy food from the vendors. So like I definitely would pack like snacks and a lunch and everything. And um, they and they they but they can stand at your table while you go take a bathroom break and tell anybody, oh, she'll be back in a few or you know he or she will be back in a few minutes. Um, that's fine or they can like go up to the front and get you water if you like you know they'll, they'll be checking in um and so yeah i would miss, make sure you have signs with your business name your pricing um if you only take cash make sure people know that but again i would do not recommend that um and i you know i would if you want to do bags that's always good it's another way to brand things you can get like a sticker or a stamp and stamp your business name on it um you can Go to, if you don't have time, or I don't even know, like I like literally don't know anything sometimes at all, right? And right now I, like I don't know how, if there's enough time for you to order online, to like order bags, um, buying bags in bulk, like you can't really buy, I've tried to like look on Amazon and it's not, it's not, it's, just, it's not cost effective at all to buy bags in bulk from Amazon. You really wanna do it from like a supply store. Um, if you don't have time to do that, or you don't want to pay like an like extra shipping, Shurin's down in the strip district, they sell bags in bulk. Like you can buy a big box of bags for not a, not a lot of money, or you can buy like just a bunch of handfuls of bags. It's less expensive than going to like a craft store and buying them. Um, and if worse comes to worse, you can always just like, if you have, if you have like a, you know, a uh, drawer in your kitchen filled with old grocery bags it's fine and a lot of people at our events carry totes so they may not even want a bag um oh i always make sure you bring like a self-care supply bag which like chapstick masky tape safety pin sharpie like bring a notebook to take notes um because you're gonna like think of things that you should be doing differently while you're doing these events and it's always good to have a notebook to write them down um band-aids aspirin needle and thread anything like that like pens Definitely bring that. Um, we'll have, like, we always have a first aid kit and we always have extra pens. So if some, you know, like there are things that we have. Totally 100% wear comfortable shoes. I highly recommend wearing sneakers. Um, I was for years somebody who would never wear tennis shoes anywhere except for to um, or exercise in. And now I am like that mom who is in tennis shoes all the time. Um, but the concrete floors are after a few hours can be really, really, really brutal. Um, so if you, aren't going to wear tennis shoes or you want, like no one can see your feet. Like, so like wearing cute heels or cute shoes is like a moot point at a craft show. Like I always say wear comfortable shoes that you can stand on all day. Make sure you bring water. Um, my catchphrase for my children is dehydration is the silent killer. Um, but we will have water through snacks, pack a lunch. Um, don't have to worry about the temperature fluctuations. It's going to probably be hot. So prepare for that. Um, and I would bring, especially at Construction Junction, I would have like a trash bag with you because I don't know, um, like I know at the convention center, there are garbage cans all over the place, but at Construction Junction, like if you like, you know, like, or just like have little scraps of paper here and there, you're just gonna have a place to shove it. You just like keep that under your, tr under your, um, under your table. And that, that actually like this, like being told to bring a trash bag was one of those aha moments I had years ago when I was doing this, where I was like, oh yeah, that's like, seems like not a, like a, like that seems like not a like thing you would think about and it was really helpful to have that with us um and finally you can always email me um with your questions and this maker i just i love to share her picture because first of all she was so happy all day long like this level of energy would like happened all day long from her for her and she messaged me before the event she was at the 20 i think this was from either 2018 or 2019 she makes little fuzzy monsters she messaged me and she was like am i allowed to set up a tent this is at the convention center and i was like well we don't really like like you know pop-up tents like i mean we don't really do that it's not an outdoor event you can bring like a tent frame and use it as like things to hang on and she was like well the reason why i ask is because i just sewed a fuzzy giant monster top for my tent and i really really want to be able to use it and i was like fuzzy giant monster top yes of course you can bring that 
So I don't know. She's this woman makes me extremely happy. So that's why I finished my um, presentation with her. So I'm gonna stop the share. Um, that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. Does anybody have any questions about the event itself that I can answer or have any like concerns? Um, I should mention we are going to be doing a, a city paper dedicated email. So the marketing that we're doing is a city paper dedicated email. Um, we're doing a city paper Instagram takeover. I'm trying to work out the details with WYP and WESA to do to do some ads in some of their emails the week leading up. And they said that, that we, like I got a yes from them, but I can't seem to get them to like finalize the this, this specifics. So I'm hoping that that will happen. Um, we sent out a press release. We've, we've added the event to all of the, um, all of the like different calendars throughout the city, like Artsburg and all of the event calendars that we normally add things to. But the best way to get people to attend this is for you guys to share it and for you to go to the Facebook group. And I meant to put that in the email today, which I like realized that I put, I put it in the subject, but I never put it in the email. Um, if you go to the, to the Facebook, um, and I'm gonna, I'll share the link directly to the Facebook event, just invite everybody you know, like tell everyone you know to come. Like people love to support their friends. Um, and now that like people, you know, we're getting back into the world and of doing things, um, you know, I've gone to two pop, I've gone to three pop-up markets in the last month that I honestly don't know if I would have gone to like in the past because I would, I, I go to so many of these things that I, but I just was, I was just so excited to like go and support makers that I know that um, like, and then, and then there was a fourth one I could, I didn't even, I didn't know about until after it happened or I was planning on going and I don't remember what happened, but um, it was the, the Argyle one, Beth, that you're Beth Vermillion, not Beth Arnstein is, are doing. Um, so <laughs> where I, I'm like super, I was really, I'm still kind of bummed at myself for not going to that. Um, but if you guys, if you guys all share or just go to like Facebook, if you, if you're active on Facebook, I just sent you the link in the chat. And just so you can see that like this event has already reached 4,000 people and 187 people have responded. Um, but you know, invite, invite everybody, invite everybody. Um, I did today make, um, finalize the Instagram takeover instructions. I made a little like screen, screen share video because I feel like, um, some folks don't, aren't necessarily, oh, Argyle is open through the end of the year. Perfect. So Argyle is a new pop-up shop in, in Oakland. Um, and they're always looking for new applicants. So that's like another, do you know the website? If you know the website, share it. There are other places to go where you can go and try and, and like get, try and get your products are, I'll send it, I'll send out, actually, I'll send it out in my email. Um, there's a bunch of like consignments type stores in Pittsburgh um, that you can go and apply to to have your um, stuff being sold. Um, I'm just making myself a note at consignment stores to email to shop to show and sell. This like, I'm currently using this smallest notepad for my to-do list and it's not smart. Um, so my Instagram story, so the, the thing I wanted to tell you guys about Instagram is I changed some of your dates. And so hopefully you took note of that today. Um, not everyone signed up for it, which is fine. Um, you can bring your own eight foot table instead of using ours. Yeah, you can totally do that. I don't, I don't care at all. Um, uh, you just have to carry it. I'm not going to help you carry it. <laughs> so, um, but, oh, another thing, great thing about the, the construction junction is you pull, when you come at four o'clock, anytime after four, you um, come in, check in, and they've got carts, they've got flatbed trucks, they've got all sorts of, like, so this things that you can like wheel out to your car and unpack your car and wheel it all in all like you know take one or two trips you don't need to like worry about having a cart or anything they've got all of that there for us to use so you will can put your um so an ig takeover is an instagram takeover so it's been in a, a pretty much every email that i've sent um that you have the opportunity to take over the handmade arcade instagram account um so if you want to sign up for it you still can um, let me share the calendar. Oh, that's not the calendar. That's my marketing calendar. Um, hold on. Let me click screen share. 
So, um, an Instagram takeover is when you, when you basically log into the Handmade Arcade Instagram account and you um, post what you want to post to our uh, over 10,000 followers. So, um, you can see that I changed, I, I condensed everyone who has been signed up for it um, into starting on July 23rd because it really doesn't make any sense whatsoever for someone to do a post on July 18th and then another post to not happen until like a week later. So if you want to sign up, there are the, these dates to sign up. And so basically what you do is you, you'll get an instruction sheet, um, which I have right here, which I finished today. Um, and I made these little videos to show you even more like how to do it. Um, it's on an Android phone, but like you can do, you can do one post in our feed, which will stay there permanently. So like you do like an introduction email, like an introduction, like, hi, this is Trisha. I'm with, um, so, um, I don't know, Trisha sews a lot, but that's my business. I'm really excited to be taking over the Handmade Arcade Instagram account and then like a description of what you do. Um, and then you can add up to 10 pictures in that post. And that's it. That's all you can add to our feed for that day. But you can then do four, up to four stories that day. And you can do anything you want for the stories. You can do a little video, you can talk, you can, you know, you can record yourself doing something, you can like make a, like an animation, whatever, whatever your skill set is with social media, you can do as much as um, you want up to four story posts. Um, so like you, if you want to like start thinking about that, if you haven't done it before, um, you can start playing around with some, like an app called Canva is a good app to use to make moving stories. Um, the Instagram instructions will have, I'll, I'll share them, but I'm going to share them. I have to like add one more thing to them. Um, so you, the, the, these aren't complete. I have to add one more video to them, but you basically just like have the opportunity to have your, um, yourself seen by our, our full audience. And um, if you sign up for it, um, Susan, since you asked, I'll, I'm just going to talk to you directly. If you sign up for it and you, you have no idea how to use Instagram, you don't know what to do, just email me and I'll help you. I'm totally fine with that. And even if you want to do an Instagram takeover and you don't use Instagram at all and you don't have an account and you want to send me like 10 pictures in your text, I'll just post it for you. I, I do that all the time. I can schedule it. Uh, I can, I, you guys have to do your post the day of. I can't give you our scheduling software, but I can schedule it for you if you send it to me. I can't schedule stories though. So if you need me to help you do your post, I'll only do the feed post. I can't do the stories. Um, so yeah, Susan, just reach out to me privately in an email. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and uh, I think that's it for the Instagram post. Go If you want to get some ideas about what other makers say, um, you can just go to our Instagram feed and like scroll back because um, for our, we had an event with a, an, or a group called the Origins Group in June. And then before that we had um, our spring event and we, ha we have makers to doing takeovers. And then last summer when everything shut down and the maker community was having a really hard time, we opened up our Instagram account for makers to do takeovers all summer last year. So if you scroll through, you can see the kinds of things that people posted. You can see what, like you, you can see, what you think would work for you, what you might not think would work, you know, or just see the text that they um, used in their in the description. Um, one thing I would recommend is the more you focus on like pictures of your products, and the less you focus on like actually putting text in your images for the feed post. I think that works better. You'll see if a couple makers, if you go back and look, put a lot of text in there and. Um, I don't know. I just think that that like you, the text should be in the description, not necessarily in the picture. Um, and finally, this sounds this is going to come across as mean, but it is what it is. If you mess up and you accidentally schedule more, do one. You're supposed to do one post in the feed. If you somehow do a second, I'm going to delete it because we can't have like too many posts in a day. It makes people unfollow us. And if you do stories and you do four stories, that's like the max you can really do in a day before people start to unfollow you. So if you do a fifth story, I'm just, I'm going to delete it if I see it. So don't, it's not personal. It's not personal. It's my, my marketing consultant is like, you have to delete those. They, it, you, it's just bad, it's just bad. <laughs> so, and then if you do do a story, if you know any, if you know about Instagram, um, I'm going to save at least one story from each maker into our show and sell highlights reel, which is something that people like view and like will click on, which is just another marketing tool. These are all just marketing tools um, that can help grow your business. Um, 
So yeah, I'm not, yeah. I try to be as nice as possible, but I do have to have some rule, <laughs> couple of rules. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions? I don't I think I've said literally everything I can say about the event. Okay. Um, all right. That's it. If you think of anything you want to know, you, if I didn't cover anything, um, send me an email. I'm here. Oh, uh, one other thing. I'm going on vacation. So it's, and this is in the, I think it, it might have been in the email I sent today. Um, the week I'm on vacation is going to be um, July 24th through the 31st. So I am going to have my computer and I am going to be working because I have to get, I have to, I, I have to get stuff done for the winter event. So if you ha are having any trouble whatsoever with your Instagram post during that week, you can uh, text me. Don't email me, text me. My phone number is in the instructions. Um, I will see it because if I'm on the beach, um, which I intend to be by 10, by no later than 9 a.m. every day, um, and you have issues, it'll be after that. So I'll text you back or I'll call you if it's easier to help you, to help you do it. Or if you have like tons of trouble and you just want to email me your pictures and just text me, I'll just post them for you. It's again, like, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's seconds. It's literally like, if it's taking you longer than 20 minutes to do your Instagram posts, cause you're not tech savvy, ask for my help because it literally takes me like seconds to do it. And I have two teenage daughters who I can hand my phone to and say, someone do this. And it's not a big deal. So, um, so yeah, ask for help, ask questions. And, um, I'll see you guys on August 6th for setup. I'm excited. I'm really excited for this event to happen again. So thank you all. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.